So it is five o'clock in the morning, and we are in the car. Joe, mm. there's Joe, and we're getting ready to go. Woohoo! I'm on the first airplane ride to New York. Hi, mom. Too close. And the best part about the whole day so far has been this. <laughs> There's our plane. There's Dad and Joe. We have to walk down this big ramp thing. Say hi, Mom. Hi. You excited to get on the plane? Yes. The plane is huge. Huge. So we just got into our hotel room, and here is the view. This is a Japanese vending machine. Lots of normal soda. And then there's some other stuff. We saw one that had espresso shots on the street. Kind of a normal side street in Tokyo. Really narrow street. There's real no sidewalks. Everyone just kind of walks around and bikes around on the same street. We are now at the Meiji Jingu Shrine in Yoyogi Park. Two thirds right. With the main plaza here. We're on a rooftop garden at one of the big shopping malls. That's a Starbucks over there. And then you look out and you can see the skyline. Start, we found the greatest thing ever. It's an umbrella dryer. So you stick your umbrella in and it go in and out and it dries it for you. A normal Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Alright, we are on our first city tour in Tokyo, and here is the Tokyo Tower. Here we are at the top of Tokyo Tower, and this is just kind of our daytime sky view of Tokyo. The look down window on the lowered floor of the observatory in Tokyo Tower, and so we're looking down about 150 meters right now. Alright, here we are at the Imperial Palace Plaza. This is the East Garden area. Over there is the west, and these are watchtowers that were built by the shoguns when, who were hired by the imperial government to protect the city. So now at the Asakusa main temple, and this is one of the more traditional Japanese style temples. This is the Shinto shrine in the Asakura. Uh, temple area, so that's the big Buddhist temple, and here's and the Shinto shrine. And you see the shrine. many Bodhi wooden tablets like that. And so, to pray at so the shrine, we went up and we tossed uh, a coin in, and then you take one bow, two claps, one bow, you make your wish, and then one more bow. Um, and then there are the two statue guard dogs. The one on the right has its mouth open, which represents a baby's shouting out. The one on the left side coming in has its mouth closed, which is as you die. So they watch over you from birth to death. All right, we're about to walk into Yodobashi Akiba, one of the biggest electronic stores in the world. many escalators. Yeah. Alright, you guys are seeing this, right? It just keeps going and going. And there's just aisles and aisles of stuff. It's like Walmart on steroids. You know you want one. We're on the train. Here we are at the top of one of the Tokyo government buildings. And this is our night view of Tokyo. And in the words of Aaron Reynolds, it really is like looking at the stars upside down. So we ran out of toothpaste, so we had to buy Japanese toothpaste. It's rainbow!
These statues are um, part of a shrine that is for kids who died at young age or in miscarriage and the parents will come and they'll buy incense sticks and they are designed to help the kids who died young pass into the next life. Up some stairs, looking at some flowers. Here's our sky view of the city of Yamakura, which is three parts surrounded by mountains and then opens up to the sea that way. Bamboo trees. This is a large bookcase at the temple, and it is said that you can rotate it, and one turn of it um, provides you with the equivalent of the entire works of Buddhism. But we cannot turn the rotating book racks today, so I will not be coming enlightened by shortcut anytime soon. Here's the ocean view from the top of the temple. The multicolored rooftops kind of reminds me of almost like a South American, Brazilish kind of feel, but maybe that's just a coastal city thing. Peace. The temple of an hour in this cave. Check these guys out. Mm, yummy. Your enzyme juice. What? How excited are you to go see the Great Buddha? I don't know. We've now made it to the Great Buddha. You guys ready for this one? <laughs> Three, two, one. inside the giant Buddha statue. Talk about really getting in depth with the religion. <laughs> Lotus Pond. So this stretch of trees down the middle of the street are all cherry blossoms. And when they bloom, you know, these are the classic, like, pink, white Japan trees that you think of blocked by the bus right now. Um, but when they bloom, there's this huge stretch um, that just goes on for, like, a quarter mile. And in the spring, this is, like, the number one place to go see the cherry blossoms. Ding machines are everywhere. We are now in the Chinatown part of Yokohama which is a city population 3.7 million right outside of Tokyo. The store! We are now at the Sanki Gardens in Yokohama. And besides the beautiful gardens outside, which I'll show you guys later, the inner garden is just this amazing collection of Japanese architecture. There are gates from famous temples, and this is a house um, that was owned by one of the shogun's first sons, and it's just absolutely gorgeous here. Gardens. Gardens and stairs. Gardens. Buildings. And we're going through the gate. The gate. We're walking down the path and there's a cat. Dirt, 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 dirt. Gardens, dirt, gardens, dirt, gardens dirt, and paths. Gardens, dirt, dirt, gardens, dirt, gardens dirt, and paths. While I was dirt, walking dirt, down the path dirt, in the middle of a garden, dirt, I saw dirt, an old dirt, man dirt, and I had to say, dirt, Pardon dirt. me, sir. Cause while I was dirt, walking dirt, on that path dirt, in the middle dirt, of the garden, dirt, I told my dirt, metapod dirt, that he had to use dirt, Harden. His dirt, defense dirt, went up, dirt, the base dirt, went down, and it danced dirt, our way dirt, all over dirt, the town. Dirt, 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 dirt. 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 Cause while I was dirt, walking dirt, on the path, dirt, I saw a dirt, pagoda. So I put on a toga dirt, to do dirt, some yoga. Dirt, then I dirt, met, saw my metapod dirt, drinking from a soda. soda. Gardens, dirt, dirt, gardens, dirt, gardens, dirt, gardens dirt, and paths. Dirt, gardens, dirt, gardens, dirt, gardens dirt, and paths. Yeah. <laughs> so many people.
All right, so we, we were going to people watch at the train station, but we tried to get out the same st uh, station, and we ended up being blocked out by the system. So we had to take a train for one stop, and that's what we're doing. Nice. <laughs> Picnic lunch in Japanese style garden with bento boxes. Now checking out old cars at the Toyota history room. And the best part is infinite cars. It's for Jess, we found the DeLorean. It's Kitty Land. It's the light from a Ferris wheel being reflected oh, off the building. Zoe. Here we are on our first bullet train. It's, almost, it's like an airplane inside. How excited are you, Dad? This is awesome. Jokes. Yeah. Bullet. Now going to see the Great Buddha in Nara, and this city is known for all of the deer that walk around the park. So check them out. To see the Buddha, the wonderful Buddha of Nara. The approach. tradition that wafting smoke towards you brings you good luck. Mmm. The exit without walking by the gift shop. <laughs> pillar is modeled after a pillar that a Buddhist convention in 1988 was held to have all Buddhist sects meet and discuss world peace. Oh. Here. Hi. Hi, dear. Dear pigeons, dear. At another Shinto shrine, this time in Nara. And there are all these really cool stone lines that go all the way up the way. We are now at the garden behind Nijo Castle which is where the last shogun ruler surrendered his power to the emperor. So what happens was, um, after the Japanese feudal times, a couple of warlords called shoguns rose up. Uh, the first one was in Kamakura, where we were a couple days ago. Um, and then the next one, was here in Kyoto, and then the last one was in Tokyo, but this was the castle built by the one who ruled in Tokyo to come here to visit the emperor, because while he was ruling, the emperor still lived here in Kyoto. Um, so here's the castle over there. I can't get any video inside because we're not allowed to photograph in there, um, but here are the gardens behind it. Um, so inside was where the last shogun gave power back to the emperor, kind of beginning the new modern age of Japan. The gate to the inner palace inside the castle is back over that way, um, but there's a whole second moat and wall and everything to protect the inner palace. The coolest parts about this palace was the floorboards that have these weird nails attached to them so that when you step on them they squeak. They're called nightingale floorboards, um, so that way the the whole castle is covered in floorboards like these, and that way the shogun and his ministers would know if there was an assassin or someone coming in because the floor squeaks like a nightingale. Main gate to the castle, big staircase over there. Now at the Kyoto Golden Pavilion, which was built by a member of the shogun, the second shogun family, which ruled out of Kyoto. Um, and after he retired as shogun, he built this temple as a Zen Buddhist temple. The first floor is for aristocrats. No, no, the floor is a Zen residence. No, the first floor was designed for aristocrats. The second floor was for the samurai warriors, and the third one was as a Zen temple. Golden Pavilion, over here we see 
a pine tree that has been grown to look like a sailboat. Um, the trunk is the mast of the tree and there's a big branch that represents the bow. And then there's little rocks on the bottom, you can't see them from here, that represent the ocean. Why don't you tell our lovely viewers where we are? Said it. The video wasn't playing when you said no. it. Imperial Palace in Kyoto. Okay. Yeah. That's all I have to say. <laughs> and here we are at yet another Shinto shrine. Something cool about this shrine. So this tower over here is the Tower of the White Tiger, which guards the west. And this tower over here is the Tower of the Blue Dragon, which guards the east. Now we're walking on some stepping stones, trying not to fall in into the water in this pond. Do. Go. Um, 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 um. Another Buddhist temple. Yay. There's Joe. All right, so the coolest thing about that temple was not the 1,000 Buddhas, but the archery contest they, they hold every year. So there's four events. There's the 100 arrow competition where they shoot 100 arrows over a 120 meter range. Then there's the same thing for 1,000 arrows. Whoever hits the target the most wins. Then there's one for the kids where they do 100 and then 1,000, and then there's the fourth one, which is a 24-hour archery competition where they shoot usually over 10,000 arrows over 24 hours, and the record holder shot 13,000, which comes out to about one every seven seconds for 24 hours straight. Hitting the target 8,000 sometimes. Thanks, Mom. Now atop the veranda in one of the biggest temples in Kyoto, in fact, the biggest temple in Kyoto, and we have this amazing shot of the Kyoto skyline. And you can see way out the western mountains. That's the highest mountain in Kyoto. And just this beautiful skyline next to the shrine. People used to jump from here, the 13 meters, about 40 feet down. And it is said that if you survived, your wish would be granted. And if you died, you would be sent to um, Buddha's paradise, Nirvana. Um, the only way I can see that working is if you wish for a broken arm, but people used to do it. Two, some 200 people did it and 85% of them survived. So there's that. With this video on YouTube, we might have so many fans. Japanese scarecrow. It's a Japanese riverboat cruise. It's really good. Um, nom, 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 nom. Baby monkey. Big. Hey, Joe, freak out. We are now at the atomic bomb dome in downtown Hiroshima, and this building was left together after the bomb and has been preserved as a reminder of the damage of what nuclear weapons can do and as a memorial to um, everlasting peace. And so they're doing some scaffolding work on it right now. It's supposed to wrap up at the end of July, but normally the dome just stands and the whole building is a symbol of the city and its strength.
the bomb exploded just about a couple buildings over um, in the air, and this was, like I said, one of the few that was left standing. And here's the memorial for the actual drop site of the bomb, which exploded 600 meters from this spot. And this memorial part of the Peace Park is for all of the victims of the bombings. Um, and the epitaph on the grave down there under the water says, Let all the souls here rest in peace, for we shall not repeat the evil. Turtle. Turtle. Adorable escalators ever. And now we are on the ferry bound for the Miyajima Island, which is right behind us to see the floating Tori Gate and the Shinto Shrine there. There it is, Miyajima Island. Guys, more deer. Bambi! Yay! So the house that the people run the kayaking service out of has a rentable room up here that is in the very traditional Japanese style with the tatami mat. Um, there are some futons if you don't think those are comfortable enough, but. Um, this kind of space would be good for eight people, and you can go out and see the mountains. They have the sliding doors and everything, um, and this would be, I'm pretty sure I want to retire to this kind of place now. Fried oyster lunch on Miyajima. Here's the gate as we're approaching low tide. Can't believe that we kayaked through that just a few hours ago. There is the Tori Gate in all its grandeur at low tide. Thought you knew about rice paddles before this? You were wrong. And we are on our last day of the Japan trip, and here we are after lunch um, at a rooftop garden above a shopping mall, uh, right in the middle of Osaka. And we're just doing a couple more things today, but really the trip's kind of coming down to a close. But check out this view of the garden from here. Last night in Japan in Osaka, we're going to the top of this building to check out the Floating Garden Observatory. So here's our night view of Osaka from the top of the rooftop garden observatory. And this marks our last night in Japan. And it's been a crazy fun trip and seeing how different of a country Japan is from the United States has been really cool. But what's really striking me tonight is how similar it is. Um, there's something about the night cityscape that just seems so familiar despite the fact that I'm halfway around the world from where I grew up. Um, you know, maybe wherever we are, night, cities at night always look the same. And I think that's just a testament to the commonality of the human experience. And the fact that really, no matter whether we're in the United States or Japan or some country in the Middle East, um, we're all living on this one world at this one time. And maybe that's the most important thing.